Hello students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 7 on Climate Science. This is the first video in this particular module and we're going to be talking a little bit about the natural greenhouse effect. The learning intention for this particular video is that we can use modelling to explain the causes of the natural greenhouse effect and examine the timescales in which changes occur. This first section of our study of climate science fits into this, or at least under the umbrella of this first inquiry question, how long does it take for the climate to change naturally and what causes these changes? It's worth brainstorming a question like this just to think about what your understanding of climate science is already. Climate science is, or at least can be, a very emotive area and it's one that generates quite a lot of discussion, especially around times of elections such as we're currently going through uh, in Australia. And it means that we need to think about some of the things that we're hearing. We need to weigh those up and try and get a sense of where the truth can actually lie. Now, there's been some very strong points of view held by both uh, the leaders of our own country, as well as those in some of the other nations around the world. Some ways where we can kind of give you a little bit of uh, an idea of this kind of level of controversy or at least level of emotion that's generated around something like climate science is to compare um, the two presidents of the United States before the current one, Joe Biden. And that was Donald Trump, and we don't need to go too far for uh, quotes from Donald Trump because he quoted himself regularly uh, on Twitter. Um, and so he's uh, obviously had a view about uh, climate science and global warming. Um, and in his State of the Union address, Barack Obama uh, also had a view about climate science and climate change. And these are the sorts of things that we need to kind of look at and weigh up in terms of not only the varying views that people can have, but also how influential those views can be when they're held by people in uh, positions of great power and influence. As I mentioned, at the moment in Australia, we're leading into our uh, federal election and the current prime minister is Scott Morrison and the, the hopeful candidate from the Labor Party is Anthony Albanese. And again, these two have also been quoted uh, relatively recently on their views around climate change. Um, Scott Morrison uh, suggesting that Australia was reducing its emissions by around 20% and that um, the reductions that Australia was making was greater than those uh, of New Zealand, Canada, the United States, Japan and many countries in Europe. So I'll leave that there as just a little statement um, from Morrison. Anthony Albanese uh, has also spoken about climate change, saying that no Australian would lose their job as a result of a shift to net zero emissions by 2050, which included mid-term 43% reduction target. Not only can we guarantee it, our modelling guaranteed it. So here's a small um, a comparison in terms of the um, reduction in emissions and a shift to net zero and when and why and also some of the consequences that might be associated with that um, and very important for our first discussion on, in this first section of climate science is modelling. Now one of the things that's very important for us to have a look at is some of the modelling that we do that gives us a little bit of an idea about the natural greenhouse effect and what we will call through this module the enhanced greenhouse effect and some of the ways that these might change uh, as a result of the activity of humans. In class, we want to set up a little model to try and give you an idea of how the greenhouse effect works. And I'm sure that you already have some opinions about that. And that's one of the reasons why we started um, this video and also why we'll start um, our classes that way too. Heffernan and Mann have described the natural greenhouse or the greenhouse effect as the tendency of certain atmospheric gases to trap heat that would otherwise be radiated into space. The greenhouse effect has moderated the Earth's surface temperature over the Earth for a long period of geological time. And one of the things that we need to do is we need to think about the time scale of change because it's true that there have been cycles, changes in the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over time and that has led both to global warming and global cooling. 
And one of the things that we need to do is we need to have a look at some of these natural cycles. We need to understand what it is that happens both in terms of some of the natural processes on Earth, such as um, earthquake volcanic activity, um, the processes that happen biologically, um, obviously photosynthesis and respiration, two very important processes that are going to contribute to the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but also some other activities which may not necessarily just change the levels of important greenhouse gases, but may change them at a rate not previously experienced. And so one of the things that I want you to think about as we look at this particular uh, module is rates. Rates are going to be one of the really important things that we need to look at. Part of the natural greenhouse effect is what we've seen and what we've used to describe things like snowball earth, a drop in carbon dioxide levels, perhaps associated with living things that were starting to um, be able to remove carbon dioxide through um, processes like photosynthesis, which were dropping um, that temperature, maybe taking advantage of the fact that as the as the temperatures were cooling a little bit, we were getting higher uh, snow deposits or ice deposits. We were taking advantage of the albedo effect, that, that reflection of heat back into space. And so therefore, this might have actually led to this global cooling, the production of um, what we've called snowball earth, which happened very early. Uh, in the history, in geological history of the Earth. But it is true to say that there have been certain human activities which seems to have, as I mentioned, affected the rate at which some of these very important greenhouse gases have changed or have increased uh, in the atmosphere. And this is not just about a story about carbon dioxide. This is a story about water vapor. This is a story about methane and a number of other important gases too. So we need to, um, I guess, also separate out in our mind that greenhouse is about carbon dioxide. It's not just about carbon dioxide, but it certainly is um, partly about carbon dioxide. And so some of what we have seen in terms of changes in the rate of increase of some of these greenhouse gases has been some of these uh, human activities which have made significant changes to the surface uh, and hence to the oceans and the atmosphere of Earth. And that's including the burning of fossil fuels. Uh, that includes the processes involved in mining and collection and refining and then actually using those fuels as energy sources. The processes of land clearance leading to increases in agriculture, the methane emissions that are often associated with livestock, and also um, nitrous oxide emissions that can be a result, again, of that burning of fossil fuels. We can also have sulfur oxide emissions, um, the process of refining, uh, and the process of daily living. It's human activity that's been at the center of a lot of these significant changes and in fact, it's going to be human activity that um, is the only thing that's going to try and reverse some of the effects that you're going to see in this particular module. I'll give you one more thing um, just before we move on from this first video. And that is that I think there's a huge range of really interesting resources that you can use to help you to deepen your understanding of climate science. Uh, there's a lot of popular science writers who have written about climate science in an accessible way. I'm sure you've um, all heard of Dr. Carl, and uh, if you've ever had the opportunity to hear him speak or to see him interact uh, with high school students as I have, he's incredibly knowledgeable. I know of no one in science uh, who has the breadth of knowledge that he, he has, the, the broad understanding of so many areas of science. Science is a very big field, and most of us who teach it have our areas where we, we feel more specialized and where we feel just like our understanding is a little bit stronger and a little bit deeper. Dr. Carl uh, is just one of those very unusual characters who just has such a fantastic grasp of a very broad range of science. And his little book um, of climate change science is incredibly interesting. It's very um, recent and therefore very relevant. But like anything, um, I'm a big fan of Tim Flannery. I've been watching um, Sir David Attenborough produce his programs um, for 
my entire life pretty much um, and and just in awe of the fact that he continues to do so. Um, look, any of these resources, and I could have filled this screen with fantastic resources uh, about climate change science, but I will say this. The one thing about writing books is that they very quickly age, especially if you are putting in um, quotes, statistics, graphs, charts, and we have to do that if we're going to talk about climate science. We have to talk about some of the statistics, some of the data that's associated with our understanding of uh, climate science. And so as you read through each of these, look at when it was written, think about some of the ideas that each of these um, very important um, and very knowledgeable people are sharing with you um, about this very important issue and then go and check the data for yourself. Go and have a look and see what sort of things that you can reinforce, that you can see if the data is correct, if it's the most recent data that we have and it's going to be something that, that you can use to help you to tell your story about climate science. And that's where we're going in this series of videos and also in the classroom. Thanks very much for watching.